This is the Dr. Paul Show, a woman's personal guide to understanding men. And now, here's Dr. Paul. Hi, this is Dr. Paul, the Dr. Paul Show, and have we got an interesting show for you tonight. How low can you go in radio? Well, Dr. Frida Drake will be here shortly to let us know how low you can go. She is a woman who specializes in women's issues, and I know you're going to love it. So first tonight, we're going to do the letters because we're going to change that format a little bit. We're going to let her take care of that business regarding women's issues, and you just won't believe it. So hang in there. We've got some emails that are hot, hot, hot tonight. Let's hear them. Number one, we have one from, we won't mention names here, of course. Dear Dr. Paul, I have an issue. How do I handle a man with cold feet? Well, I know what you mean, but I can't resist. Wool socks would work. Okay, enough of that. The basics about us. We have been together for two and a half years. The wedding is set for this spring. Good. Sounds good. Two and a half years. Although it can be two and a half weeks as far as I'm concerned. Two and a half months, I think I've been there. Basically, his view on the wedding is that we're going to be together forever, quote unquote, she says. So what's the rush? Oops. Guys, are you listening? This is not the way to go. Fair lady does not appreciate that attitude, but let's continue. But basically, he will do it just because it means so much to me, but he doesn't think us having a wedding is important. Okay, I'm going to comment on this in a moment. I don't want to push him into it, but we will have been together for three years on our wedding day. I don't see it as rushing, but I don't want to forever be just the girlfriend. Thank you, Dr. Paul. Well, I can certainly understand that you don't want to forever be the girlfriend because you might be forever the girlfriend and he marries someone else, which has happened. Don't let that happen to you. Take control. Look, this is not just for this man. This is for any man. You need to listen to what women say to you. And what she's saying is very direct. And I'll give you some suggestions as to how to handle it with this man. You're not wrong. All right? If he's given you a ring, and I presume that he has from the gist of this because you planned a date to get married. So I presume that he said, okay, here's an engagement ring. It's credible evidence that he's engaged to you. All right. If he said we're engaged to be engaged, that's one thing, but apparently you've set a date. Therefore you're engaged to be married. A lot of people are engaged because of circumstances they can't control children involved, etc. So I don't know what your circumstances are here. In this case, it appears that you're going to be married. We'll take it from there. Now, What happens when he says to you, well, if it means so much to you, then we'll get married. This is very demeaning. You are being taken for granted. You cannot allow a man to do that. And I'm not just talking to this woman who's written in, but I'm talking to other women who've written in with similar things. You cannot be taken for granted. You must take control. I'll go back to the yellow page item. Get that book out. Write down one side of the page a line, put on one side yes, on one side no. You take that legal pad, and then you ask him over coffee, eyeball to eyeball, direct. Now, you've said to me that you don't see a reason to get married. We can be engaged. It's only a piece of paper. Is that correct? Let him answer. You do not apologize for him. Oftentimes, When you're taken for granted, and obviously your feelings are hurt, I can see that, I can feel it, you need to turn it around. You ask him, all right, let's put down a yes. Are you interested in me? First of all, he is not going to say no. That's one yes. Then, are you interested in a life together? Well, he's going to say yes to that. You build as many yeses as you can and a few no's, and then you show it to him and say, look, The yeses outweigh the noes. I want to make something crystal clear to you. I was looking for someone when I found you. Oops. You know what he hears? This is what a man hears. She could look for someone else. Then you follow up by saying, 
I understand also that men who leave women they have been going with, engaged to, etc., six months later have huge regrets. They have overlooked things that were important to them, and they regret it for the rest of their lives. Then you stop and you look him right in the eye and say, are you willing to regret this for the rest of your life? And say nothing. Say nothing. He may mumble, say something, well, no, I don't want to do that, blah, blah, blah. But you let that go because what you've done is you have planted the seed. Now, later on, you ask him, are you willing to regret this for the rest of your life? Periodically, you ask him that. What's happened is it's in his subconscious, and he's going to think about that. Now, you're not really trapping him, but you're allowing him to think about what values he really has. You have to have a value for him, or he wouldn't be there in the first place. Now, he may be playing you a little bit, and you recognize that. You don't like to be toyed with, especially with something this important. Obviously, you are concerned, or you wouldn't be writing to Dr. Paul. And I don't blame you. I'd be concerned as well. Don't feel like you said in this first sentence of the last paragraph, I don't want to push him into it. You're not can't push anybody to anything. He made his commitment. You make your commitments and you live with them. A date has been set. Now, if he chooses to leave, then you need to close the door. You do not open that door again. That door is closed forever. No matter who you are, and again, I'm not just addressing this to the person who emailed this in. This goes for every woman who has emailed something similar. You don't let that door open one crack. All right? You make certain that door is closed forever. They cannot come back. It's over. Done. Kaput. Bene. If you allow that to come back, it will never change. It will always be the same. People don't change. Their circumstances may change, but I assure you they do not change. We may modify their behavior, but you're not going to do that. You need to take control. Absolute, total, unequivocally, you need to take control. Got that? Good. I hope that's valuable for all who've heard this. I've had many letters like this. Uh, Oftentimes, people get engaged around the holidays, and then they plan to get married in June. And the closer June comes, not just the men, but the women, too, get, as the woman said, cold feet, a term meaning get scared. And that's natural. Now, in the event that you find it is not going in this direction, you let them know up front, This is so critically important to you and me and our lives together that we need to go see a marriage counselor. We need maybe talk to someone who is involved with relationships. But I would suggest a marriage counselor because that's where you're going. You're going to become married. In effect, you're in many ways married already. So this is where to go. I know you understand that. I know everybody else does. All the best with that one. We'll see what else my producer has sprung on me tonight. Thank you so much, Mike. That was a good one. Uh, I have a question for the love doctor. Dear Dr. Paul, I need advice. Doc, I got myself in an entangled web with two guys I love. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Two guys I love. Okay. I left my boyfriend for this guy. I have loved even before I hooked up with my boyfriend. He broke up with me and my boyfriend took me back. Need I say more about closing doors? Don't open the door. Leave the door closed. Done. He'd never, frankly, he never, never, ever needed to take you back. That was his mistake. But I'm moving right along. And I'm not taking sides here. I'm reading what I'm reading, and I'm seeing what I'm seeing. Now he has come back begging me to come back to him that he made a mistake leaving me. Okay, so you've got two of them. (laughs) Confusing. One has left you, and he came back, and the other one took you back. Charming. (laughs) Splendid. My problem is I love him more than anything else in the world, but I do not want to hurt my boyfriend who has been kind and has cared for me. Please, I need your help. Please. I would forever be grateful to you. Please help me. What do I do? This came from another country, I see. Okay. 
I'm going to suggest something to you. This is going to sound really off the wall, but it will work. You need to sit down and talk, not together, to both of them individually and tell them exactly where you stand. Now, why do you want to do that? Because you want to read them very carefully. You want to see that facial expression in each one of them. You need to read them. Now, my producer has something he's going to say about this because I can see that he's put the quotes up. Mike, would you like to contribute here? Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the uh, the Aesop fail, fable. It's uh, when the dog walking uh, across a bridge with a bone in its mouth, and he just happens to look over in the water and sees this reflection. And what does he see? Another dog with a bone in its mouth. And what does he try to do? Well, I want that bone too. And he reaches down there, try to grab the other bone, and what happens? He has neither one. Right. Very good. Very appropriate. Aesop's fable. Thank you. So endeth the lesson. So endeth the gospel according to Mike. You sit down and look at each one of these people over coffee, not drinks. You are not going to do it at night. You're not going to go home with either one of them. You're going to sit there and you're going to read them so carefully. In fact, you might even get a book about reading facial expressions. There was a video TV show on called Lie to Me. It's very accurate, by the way. You can read the expressions of people. They don't lie. Their facial, they may lie, but their facial expressions don't. Juries can pick that out frequently amazing, but we have that ability. And you watch and see which one has the sincerity level that you can correspond to. I'm helping you. You said, please, Dr. Paul, help me. And I'm helping you because you want your cake and you want to eat it too. You know in your heart of hearts what's best for you. You know which one you love, but the question is, which one loves you? You open this by saying, I love them both. But you love them both in different ways, don't you? Mmm, the plot thickens. Sounds like something for Sherlock Holmes, doesn't it? Let's go back to that first sentence. I entangled web with two guys I love. I left my boyfriend for this guy I have loved even before I hooked up with my boyfriend. He broke up with me and my boyfriend took me back. Now he has come back begging me to come back to him. You are going to have to close one of those doors. Make certain that you close the correct door. You must read them. Don't become physically involved with either one of them for a while. All right, you probably are physically involved with both of them. What I'm saying is, remove that from the equation. That cannot be a factor, although subconsciously it is a factor. In your thinking, one of them is more exciting, sexually exciting, than the other one. I know that. You know that. It's not in this letter, but it's there, isn't it? That's that X factor that we don't talk about, but it's there. One of them is more pleasing to you sexually than the other. And why is that? It's because the emotional change is is the emotional feeling. It's the non-emotional feeling. But one of them is better for you than the other. Don't settle. There's a third option here. Find another person altogether. Uh Uh-huh. Everyone says this or that, but there's also neither. So I want you to really, really evaluate this, and I want you to do one more thing. I want you to email Dr. Paul and tell me how this worked out. You alone can read what's going on. It happens to be perhaps one of these people a player. Maybe you don't want that in your life. These are things that you really need to know before you pursue it further. But it's time for them to put up or shut up. It's a testing phase, and you are in control, not them. You make certain that you are in control. And frankly, you are anyway. I like this one. I really want you to respond to us and let us know how that worked out. We're going to break right now. We're going to have a guest following, and I think you're going to find her to be truly, truly interesting. We'll be right back after these messages.
Have a question for Dr. Tough Love? Call him live in the Tampa Bay area, 727-441-3000. Or you can call him toll-free at 866-826-1340. You can also send him an email at doc at askdrpaul.com. The Dr. Paul Show will be right back after these messages. 